animal protein has been linked to a whole host of diseases, including cancer, breast, prostate, colon cancer, diabetes, osteoporosis, prion diseases like variant Crucial Jakob, Alzheimer's and other dementias, high blood pressure, stroke, uh, kidney failure, kidney stones, dysentery, and other foodborne illnesses, both meat and dairy, um, uh, uh, animal proteins, potent cancer promoter. It putrefies in our colon, releases toxins that can exacerbate uh, ADHD and other mood and behavior disorders. The amino acid composition of animal Protein raises blood levels of homocysteine, which can damage your blood vessels, damage your bones, and also potentiate dementia um, and increases the risk for heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, and osteoporosis. And when you send the wrong, wrong signals, that can lead to disaster. So I ask you, what at what point in these particular animals' lives do they eat animal protein? because it's clear that their natural diet is plants, right? Well, when I ask that question uh, to a live audience, most people say, never, they eat plants. Well, no, there is a point at which they eat animal protein, and it's when they're babies. When they're nursing infants, during their rapid growth phase, they eat animal protein in their mother's milk. And because of that, animal protein is a potent growth stimulant in plant-eating mammals. And that is an important point to always remember. Herbivorous mammals should only be exposed to animal protein during early infancy when they are growing. And because of that, animal protein is a potent growth signal in plant-eating animals. If herbivores are exposed to animal protein during adulthood, the animal protein can activate oncogenes or cancer-causing genes because they stimulate abnormal cell growth that leads to tumor development. And when you're constantly stimulating cells that should be quiet to try and grow, you alter the DNA and those cells transform into cancer cells. And um, people say, well, I want my cells to grow. No, you don't. You may want them to increase in size when you exercise, but you don't want them trying to grow because you want them to hypertrophy, which is increasing in size. You don't want them trying to grow because that leads to tumors and cancer. And um, the uh, early nutritionists got this completely bass backwards. Um, plant. Uh, and that's why they ended up thinking that animal protein was better than plant protein. It's not. Plant-based diets are often discussed in terms of being as good as meat and dairy containing diets. Again, backwards. Um, aggregate, aggregate research shows plant-based diets are and should be seen as the best diet for humans. Common myths and misperceptions that still exist. You can't get enough protein on a plant on a vegan diet. Not true. Plant proteins are not complete. That is absolutely not true. Animal protein is better quality. Vile lie. Calcium is hard to come by. We've already dealt with that. And it's difficult to build muscle on a vegan diet. Again, not true. So early nutrition researchers discovered that animal proteins had higher percentages of specific amino essential amino acids when you compare them to plant proteins. And, you know, human beings always think more is better. And so they said, well, since they had more of the essential amino acids, that meant that they had they were higher quality. They assumed that the closer the amino acid composition of any protein was to human tissue, that meant that that protein was a better quality. Well, if you think about it, that's a de facto argument for cannibalism, because why should I eat an egg when I can eat another human being? Um, for herbivorous mammals, um, animal protein serves as, as we see, saw already, a, proton, a potent growth signal and a growth stimulant. Animal protein turns on growth genes called TOR genes uh, and increases levels of growth hormones um, like IGF-1. TOR genes function as master regulatory genes for cell proliferation and growth. They also suppress cell death, and those genes should only be um, active during uh, rapid growth uh, phase and, and when we're infants. And the most potent essential amino acid to turn on these genes is the essential amino acid leucine, okay? And decreasing animal protein uh, decreases TOR activity and also suppresses the hormone IGF-1. TOR genes are upregulated in human cancers and uh, human cancers are also covered in IGF-1 receptors. Uh, IGF-1 levels have been shown to be 9 to 13% lower in men and women who are vegan. 
compared to people who are meat eaters. And in a really important landmark study that was conducted over 18 years, the study showed that uh, people who had the highest intake of animal protein had a 75% higher overall mortality and a four-fold increase uh, in cancer death. So they had four times as much cancer and a 75% higher overall mortality. So you eat cancer, I mean, you eat animal protein at your uh, own risk. So remember, leucine was the essential amino acid that turned on those mTOR genes that cause the cancer. Well, let's look at the leucine content of things people commonly eat. And I'm, and notice I said things people commonly eat because the stuff on the right side of this graph really shouldn't be considered food. Because eggs are supposed to make baby birds. They really aren't supposed to be eaten. The flesh of animals are supposed to be meant to move them around, not really supposed to be eaten. Yeah, milk is supposed to be eaten by baby mammals, but it's not supposed to be eaten by humans. And when it's you, when it's eaten by baby mammals, yeah, it's supposed to turn on growth genes for those particular baby mammals, not for human beings. So it has a lot of leucine, so it'll stimulate those baby mammals to grow, but it shouldn't be stimulating the cells and adult humans to grow. Um, when you look at the things humans should be eating, you can see that grains and legumes have enough leucine to help us maintain um, our bodies and to even, you know, grow appropriately, but not enough to turn on cancer genes. Um, so uh, again, animal protein increases both TOR activity and IGF-1 levels. Uh, animal proteins also have a much higher content of um, amino acid called methionine, which not only pr promotes cancer development, but it also uh, accelerates mitochondrial aging uh, and oxidation, which will um, make your cells uh, grow old and you with it. Uh, animal protein also accelerates kidney damage, increases heart disease, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, inflammation, and bone loss leading to uh, uh, inflammation. Then there are what are called estrogenic growth promoters in meat. In 1979, um, there was an epidemic of breast enlargement in Italian children that they traced back to the use of synthetic estrogens and anabolic growth promoters uh, that were fed to these farm animals to accelerate their growth rate. Because, you know, the faster they can get the animals to grow, they can get them in the market sooner, and they increase their profit margin. Um, the European Union banned the use of these drugs in their food supply, and they had to ban the importation of meat from America. Why? Because we continue to use this crap. Um, American agribusiness continues to use these synthetic estrogens and anabolic growth promoters, such as Xeranol and Ralgo Malgum. Uh, Xeranol is designed to be persistent, meaning it hangs around the tissues of the uh, meat of these animals even after they are slaughtered and sent to market. Xeranol is as potent in its estrogenic properties as estradiol, the primary sex ster steroid in women. And it's also as potent as DES, uh, which was a synthetic estrogen that was banned over 30 years ago because it caused reproductive cancers in women. In the absence of effective federal regulation, the meat industry uses hundreds of animal feed additives with little or no concern about the carcinogenic and other toxic effects of dietary residues of these additives. Uh, that's a quote from nutritionfacts.org. Uh, let's look at the estrogen and cortisol content in milk. Um, in each glass of milk, you've got uh, about 176 nanograms of estrogen and 76 nanograms of cortisol. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I pressed the wrong button. Uh, and over the lifetime of Western women, um, uh, this is one of the reasons that Western women have uh, more breast cancer than um, women in rural China, because um, the estrogen exposure is four times greater and the breast cancer is five times greater. A recent study of over 53 thousand of almost 53,000 North American women conducted over eight year period and uh, was published in the International Journal of Epidemiology showed a marked increase in breast cancer risk associated with milk consumption. Consuming a fourth to a third a cup of dairy milk per day was associated with increased risk of breast cancer of 30%. If you increased it to uh, one cup per day, the risk went up to 50%. Uh, 
Uh, for women who drank two to three cups per day, they increase their risk by up to 80%. Dairy product consumption is also the leading risk factor for prostate cancer uh, in the American diet. Harvard Health professional studies show that men who drank more than two servings of milk per day had a 60% increased risk of prostate cancer. Uh, exposure to both natural and synthetic hormones and dairy products increased production of IGF-1 by the liver caused uh, because of dairy and animal protein consumption have been linked to increasing risk for breast prostate cancer, as well as testicular cancer and likely ur uterine and ovarian cancers as well. Lactose in dairy products has also been linked to a higher risk for pancreatic, ovarian, and testicular cancers. Uh, animal protein also increases levels of IGF-1, and this is in addition to the endogenous and exogenous hormones found in meat, research shows Elevated IGF-1 increases insulin resistance and may contribute to the development and severity of diabetes. IGF-1 levels are also known to increase risk for a variety of cancers by stimulating the growth of cancer cells. Elevated IGF-1 levels increase the risk for heart disease and can worsen hypertension and increase your risk for stroke. In men, IGF-1 may act on the testes, boost hormone levels, increasing risk for BPH and prostate cancer. So if you can't make it through the night without peeing, or if you go to the bathroom and you can't pee, could be all that IGF-1. Research has shown that men with prostate cancer have elevated IGF-1 levels, and that may be what's wrong with Mr. Rosenberg over here. Says your lab results look pretty good, but your testosterone level is just a tad high. Um, so I'm going to get Ms. Rosenberg off that dairy. And so here's our next video. videos we've had a look at the link between the consumption of dairy products and cancer and in particular ovarian, liver, prostate and colon cancer. We've also seen the possible relationship between dairy and autoimmune diseases, dairy, asthma and rheumatoid arthritis and the possible link between milk and multiple sclerosis to name just a few. To watch those videos, check the description below. But what else are we not being told about when it comes to the consumption of dairy products and our health? Let's hear now from Dr. Michael Greger of NutritionFacts.org as he reveals some more disturbing truths about dairy. The number one source of calcium in the American diet is dairy products. The number one source of artery-clogging saturated fat, however, in the American diet is not beef, it's dairy products. Number one allergen, um, in the uh, food supply as well. So yes, cow's milk represents a substantial source of calcium, but it all depends on what baggage you want with your calcium. The kind of bonus you get with dairy is the saturated butter fat and lactose and cholesterol and antibiotics, pesticides, pus and manure. And if you're skeptical, when scientists test pasteurization protocols, they actually have to take the manure into account. Heat and activation of milk are contaminated with infected feces. To account for what happens naturally in the dairy industry, high concentrations of feces from infected cows were used to contaminate milk just to test their pasteurization protocols. There was even a pus study last year in the Journal of Dairy Science, kind of to ask the age-old question, can you taste the pus? Well, the United States has the highest allowable pus cell concentration in the world, can allow 300 million pus cells per tall frosty glass. Now, the industry, however, has always argued that it doesn't matter how infected and inflamed the udders of dairy cows are because of pasteurization. Right? It's cooked pus, so th there's no food safety risk. But what this study did was, well, can you taste the difference? That is important to industry. And so they made two vats of cheese, one with uh, U.S. milk and one conforming to the more stringent European standards. And the now with less pus cheese evidently tasted significantly better, at least according to this study. And speaking of pus, yes, zits. New Harvard study found so much significantly more um, acne in milk drinkers that it led a top dermatology journal to editorialize for what they call a no dairy diet, reducing dairy for anyone with acne to zero because of the hormone content in milk. There's no such thing as hormone-free, you know, milk, meat, or eggs, all um, animals produce testosterone and estrogen, and those steroids are deposited in their flesh and fluids. Harvard nurses study those eating dairy double their risk of having a heart attack. 
or feed your kid lots of dairy and triple their risk of colorectal cancer 65 years later. So these were children that were fed dairy as kids 65 years later had triple the colorectal cancer risk compared to those that didn't have dairy as children. More dairy, more prostate cancer. More dairy, more testicular cancer. More dairy, more Parkinson's disease. Every single study ever done on Parkinson's and dairy consumption found increased risk of Parkinson's for those eating dairy. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos. So again, research showing a consistent link uh, between during prostate cancer, 12, 14 case control studies, seven to nine cohort, cohort studies showed positive link. Research has shown that meat, eggs, and fish also increase prostate cancer in a dose-dependent fashion. So regular consumption of large amounts of animal foods will increase the risk for fatal prostate cancer. Here's a graph showing skim milk. So it's not just the fat, it's the milk itself. Um, will also increase risk.